Hello from the world's leading animation film festival. Once a year, the cartoon industry gathers here in this picturesque French lakeside town to celebrate the art form. And I'm here with one of the top men in the business, the Golden Globe winning and Oscar nominated writer and director of the How to Train Your Dragon saga, Dean de Hello. Hello, thanks for having me and thanks for the glowing introduction. Now, there are 500 films being shown at the ANSI Film Festival from around 100 different countries. This is really the place to be if you're a fan of animation, isn't it? Absolutely. It's, Absolutely. The, it's the Cannes Film Festival of animation, and people from every country flock to show their work. It's, uh, it's so diverse and so exciting, full of students and professionals, and the place to be if you're in animation. Now this year, women in animation are in the spotlight, as we're going to find out in our next report from Peter O'Brien and René Lefort. Hey, boy. Or girl. <laughs> Abominable, DreamWorks' latest romp, was directed by Jill Colton and Oscar-nominated animator Nora Toomey is on the jury. They're in the spotlight at the ANSI Animation Festival. But it's not easy making a name for yourself in the field, especially as a woman. Only 3% of animated films in the last 12 years were directed by women. Animation in France, for instance, requires a high budget, so there's an economic barrier. Unfortunately, we tend not to trust women to make ambitious films. In the film market alongside the festival, producers are keen not to be seen as ruthless. I see no difference when, uh, where there's a woman director or a man director to get the money. And uh, in fact, sometimes it's easier for women to get to, to raise the financing because there's more of awareness in, for women in film. And this is important is the talent of, uh, and, the, and the experience in the craft of, of the professional. Romanian filmmaker Anka Damian has brought Morona's fantastic tale with her, one of two features directed by women out of ten up for competition. I chose this job knowing that Romania is a very macho country. It's even more difficult than here in France. For years, I was the only female director there. Hoping to follow her footsteps is Zélie Durand, running in the graduation short films category. Her work, Sahara Palace, is a homage to her late grandfather, a Tunisian filmmaker. Grandpère a disparu à 47 ans. Je ne l'ai jamais rencontré. C'était peu de temps après avoir écrit ce scénario. Nearly everyone in her workshop is a woman, but she's not under any illusions. Les clients, les personnes pour lesquelles on travaille, les producteurs. When my clients or producers are men, there can be problems. It's difficult to be taken seriously. I've been in meetings before where I've been the one in charge of the project and people haven't looked me in the eye or spoken directly to me, even though that's what I was there for. The road might be long, but she's aspiring to return to ANSI with her first feature film. Now, several of the major animation studios in Hollywood are being led by women, including Disney with Jennifer Lee and the studio you work for, DreamWorks. Margie Cohn is the president. And there's a drive to bring more women into the creative side of animation so that there's gender parity by 2025. That's a mission that began here at the ANSI Film Festival. Do you see it working? I absolutely see it working. Uh, yesterday, we did a signing for Dragon fans. And of the 300 or so people standing in line, I would say, 75% of them were young women, students, all moving into animation with great passion. So we're going to see a change for sure. And as well as women, Japanese animation, or anime as it's known, is being honoured at the ANSI Film Festival. Now, Japanese animated film has probably never been so popular internationally as it is now. What makes them so special, do you think? I think it's the maturity of the subject matter they take on. Uh, Japan is, is one of the countries like France that treats animation uh, with, with equal respect. It isn't immediately relegated to the kids' table, as it were. And so they, uh, they're able to explore really subtle and nuanced stories that have mature themes. 
And one of the films competing in ANSI um, this year is the award-winning director Keishi Hara's The Wonderland. And the director has already won prizes twice here for Colourful in 2011 and for Miss Hokusai in 2015. The most important thing for me was to tell the coming-of-age story of this heroine Akane, a very shy girl, but who will suddenly find herself projected into another dimension and who will have to save the world. So it's a fantastic adventure that had to be set in a parallel universe. The climate problems we face in our real world are of course much more serious, but I wanted to put this story in a fantasy world so the public will become aware, in a fable-like way, of our own problems. There you go, one of the Japanese films being shown at the festival this year, now Dean Debrois. You're the writer and director of one of the most popular animated franchises in film history. Um, the saga has just come to an end with the final film, How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. How are you feeling? I'm feeling proud and relieved. I think all 300 of us who worked on the film, in fact, all three films, feel that we've spent the last decade with these characters and, and we gave them the fitting end that we hoped to deliver. So it's, it's both bittersweet because we say goodbye to one another, but also exciting because we get to move on to something completely different and new. OK, well, let's take a look at a clip from the film. We need a better plan! And quick! Back out. What, are you, what are you doing? OK, OK. And Dean, what did you want people to take away from the final part? Oh, well, I hope they feel like they, they had a satisfying, satisfying ending to the, to the saga and those who grew up with the characters uh, can now actually say goodbye in hopefully a very um, fulfilling way. Our intention was to deliver a saga that told a story in three acts, and hopefully we did so. And there's an exhibition at the ANSI Film Festival about how to train your dragon. Um, what do we learn from it? Well, you get to see all of the early artwork, the sketches, the paintings, all of the inspiration that went into the shaping of the movie. And you get to see just how many people are involved in creating one of these endeavors over the course of several years. By seeing this movie, seeing how beautiful it, it was back, way back in 2010 when the first movie came out, I loved it so much. And I grew up with these movies and it's an honor to be here and to see the directors and everyone involved. And I really look up to them a lot. The characters are so relatable and the story is so, you can get so into the story. You can really see the way each sequence was made. Each design jumps out from the screen. It's also a story that's addictive. You want to know what happens next. There's emotion and a message. Um, your two prior films and Academy Award nominations do you have high hopes for the last one? I think it's hubris to think too much about it, but uh, I would love to be in the conversation, and certainly it would make all of the team proud if, uh, you know, come awards season we were mentioned along with the others. Um, and you're actually on the jury here in ANSI this year. What sort of things are you looking for? Well, I'm, I'm one of the jurors for the student films, and so it's very exciting because you get to see blossoming talent um, I look for c courage and a strong voice and experimental nature in the medium. Um, it's, it's so diverse and exciting and it, it entertains students from around the world. So I'm, uh, I'm quite moved and quite excited by what I'm seeing. Okay, Dean Dublat, it's been a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you for joining well, us. Thanks for having me. I'm really, really excited to talk to you. Now we're going to leave you with a taster of Toy Story 4. Have you seen it? Not yet. <laughs> you watched all the other, have you watched all the other Toy Stories? I have, and I'm looking forward to seeing this one. I think it's playing tomorrow night. OK, there's, we're going to leave you with Toy Story 4 then. There's more on our website and on social media. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Uh.
Uh, hey, howdy. Hey there. Uh, sorry to bother you, but... Why, you're not a bother at all. We were just out for my early morning stroll. And look, <laughs> we met you. My name is Gabby Gabby, and this is my very good friend, Benson. Oh, uh, Woody, pleasure to meet you. Well, it's nice to meet you, Woody. And you are... This is Forky. I'm trash. Uh, our, our, our kid made him. Kid? Toys around here don't have kids. Are you two lost? Lost? <laughs> no, no, but we are looking for a lost toy. She's a figurine, used to be in that lamp in the window. Name's Bo Peep. Bo Peep? Oh, yes, I know Bo. You do? Hop on in. We'll take you to her. Oh, well, you don't have to do that. <laughs> well, okay. Please. 